In this video, let's discuss intrinsic and extrinsic pathways of coagulation, the coagulation cascade. So as you can see here, we have an intrinsic pathway and an extrinsic pathway leading to a common pathway from factor 10 activation. So as the name itself indicates, intrinsic pathway, all the factors involved in intrinsic pathway are present within the blood. Whereas in case of extrinsic pathway, the tissue thromboplastin, it's not present in blood. In fact, the source is from the tissues. And also remember that whenever there is endothelial injury, cell injury inside the vessel wall, there can be activation of both intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathways, right? That's very important. And coming to what's happening in intrinsic pathway, as you can see here in the flow chart, Heavy molecular weight kininosin and calicrine activate factor 12. So whenever a factor is activated, it's represented as factor 12 small letter a so you can see here small letter so all the small letter a indicates that the factor is activated so there is activation of factor 12 which in turn activates factor 11 in presence of heavy molecular weight kininosin and which in turn activates factor 9 and this factor 9 in turn activates factor 8 in presence of phospholipids and calcium ions as you can see here and this activated factor 8 in turn activates factor 10 and this activated factor 10 in presence of calcium ions and phospholipids activates factor 5 which in turn activates or converts prothrombin to thrombin and this thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin and also this thrombin converts or activates factor 13 that is fibrin stabilizing factor which in turn stabilizes the fibrin which is formed so this is the intrinsic pathway leading to a common pathway right and coming to the extrinsic pathway tissue thromboplastin activates factor 7 and this activated factor 7 activates factor 11 or factor 10 in presence of calcium ions phospholipids or tissue thromboplastin right so this is extrinsic pathway again leading to a common pathway so remember that in case of cirrhosis of liver there can be absence of proteins especially prothrombin and fibrinogen right so that's very important clinical consideration and also as i mentioned prior endothelial injury can activate both intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathways and now the most important aspect here is there is a simplified way to remember this entire coagulation cascade and that's how We'll discuss now and to be frank it's very challenging to remember all these factors involved in intrinsic and extrinsic pathway so one easy way to remember is always getting the mnemonics right so once you know what the mnemonic is or what the short form is then it will be easier for you to remember the various aspects pertaining to a particular topic which in turn gives you more and more confidence right so a simplified version of this cascade is as follows so first what you do is write down x so assume that you are trying to hit a bullseye so this is our target x so this represents factor 10 on the left side you start writing numbers 12 to 8 in descending order but exclude the 10th number so let me just write down 12 11 9 8 since you are written here 10 so there is no point in writing 10 here just remember it blindly that way so you're just excluding 10 here and writing down from 12 in descending order 12 11 9 and 8 on the right side write down 7 right and from the bottom start writing 1 2 and 5 because the product of 1 2 and 5 1 into 2 2 into 5 is 10 so remember it that way then you'll remember these numbers automatically 1 2 5 right so this is nothing but your intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway and this is a common pathway as you can see here factor 12 activating factor 11 which in turn activates 9 8 and this 8 activates 10 and 7 also activates 10 which in turn activates 5 2 and finally 1 that is fibrinogen right so this is a simplified way of remembering this entire intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathways right hope it's clear thank you